Okay. You're just going to have to explain this to me one more time. I am a realistic, electronically engineered life form, genetically intellectualized to mimic my individual's creative knowledge. So you're a real gimmick? Well, yes. But it's a good thing. Let me show you. So 2021 has been a year. Quite frankly, one of the only things that is currently holding my sanity together is the absurd consistency of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Not only did we get five movies this year, if you do include the backdoor Sony Spider-Man Universe entry with Venom Let There Be Carnage. But we also got five, count them, five Marvel television shows with WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki, Marvel's What If, and Hawkeye. The future is Modoc! No, not those Hulu exclusive shows. I don't even think those could be canon. I mean, this year we also got Patton Oswalt premiering as the character Pip in the Eternals movie, so that would be a little strange if one actor played multiple roles like that. Of course, we also did see Michelle Yeoh in Shang-Chi, despite her previously established character in the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. And Jimma Chan was also in the Captain Marvel movie. And it is a little bit strange that Mahershala Ali is the new Blade, despite being a very prominent character in the Luke Cage series over on Netflix. So if we're going off of some of the more strategic casting over the last two MCU movies, both Hawkeye and Spider-Man, it's highly suggestible that the events of those series did occur within the MCU. You know, the more I think about it, the more I feel like the MCU, and to a certain extent, Disney themselves doesn't even care about the canon of their own extended universe. Like just somehow, the most important entertainment brand in human history is primarily targeted towards children and not 30 or 40 year old men with the money to buy every single piece of merchandise available in the marketplace. So, anyway. So with all jokes and sarcastic tones aside, I wanted to take today to focus on one of the biggest problems that I have with the current direction Disney has taken its exclusive streaming content, especially when it comes to specific brands like the aforementioned MCU shows, The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, and a litany of upcoming projects that are sure to help Disney surpass Netflix as the premier subscription service in the entire world. Unfortunately, at the time of recording this video, all of those projects, despite their interconnection with their respective universes, are only available on Disney+. Plus. In fact, when asked if any of the MCU shows would ever make their way to home video, Marvel's head Kevin Feige responded, Is The Mandalorian on Blu-ray? You could pay a very low fee per month and have access to something that you could put on your TV whenever you want. On top of that, Feige recently shared his hopes for the newest MCU TV show stating, I hope Hawkeye is a necessary viewing for the holidays. It's fun, we've always wanted to do a story at Christmas. We had a little bit in Iron Man 3 that was our Christmas story. Nobody really looks at it as a Christmas story. We sort of consider that a Christmas movie, but this unabashedly is a holiday story. And I just have to take one quick second here and say, seriously? Am I the only person who has a problem with all of these answers? It's one thing to delay any potential home release for marquee brands such as this, but it's something else entirely to deny us the option altogether. Let's just be clear, when it comes to the MCU and Star Wars, these projects are increasingly non-skippable, with important characters, locations, and plot events being woven into every individual series, movie, or other type of interconnected project. So it does seem like each new series requires some borderline knowledge of the last to understand exactly what's going on. And this is becoming particularly true when it comes to the Marvel Cinematic Universe that has somewhat undeniably lost its main narrative thread after the conclusion of Phase 3 and the Infinity Stone Saga. Gone are the days of vaguely introducing different colored shiny rocks and a handful of loosely connected movies. Infinity Stones? We actually got a lot of those. Yeah, some of the guys use them as paperweights. Now audience are seemingly being forced to determine the significance of each individual film and series as they move through phase four and onward. Is Marvel going to lean more heavily into the multiverse? How does Shang-Chi, Tao Lo, and the Ten Rings factor into any of this? And just based off everything that we've seen in phase four, it's starting to look a lot like we're gonna get the Dark Avengers. 
as well as a new Avengers team, and a young Avengers, and an animal Avengers. Plus, when will we ever see Mephesto? Probably never if China has literally anything to say about that, but that's a whole other discussion. Still, the issue remains. No matter what the overall threat of these stories are, they are more reliant than ever on each other in order to make sense. That means if you want to fully understand Hawkeye, you kind of have to see the Black Widow movie that was just released earlier this year. And when you start to factor in that the only legitimate way that you can watch over half of the content that was released this year from Marvel is through a monthly subscription service, you can start to see the predatory nature of the entire industry rearing its ugly head. These days, it just feels like you can't own anything anymore. Not even your favorite media. Even if the people behind those projects want you to revisit those series over and over and over again, and they have the power to help that be an easier burden than a monthly subscription service that you're paying way more for than what it actually is worth. Because if we're clear, at the end of the day, it's more profitable for you, me, and everyone else to rent it for a monthly fee. And all of this is on top of other shady business practices that we've seen ever since Disney Plus's inception. And even just a little bit despite this, Disney seems fit to celebrate their media domination, not only in the new year, but also the next decade by pulling a fast one on millions of its own paying customers by quietly purging a few select titles from its new premium streaming service, Disney Plus. These movies include titles such as The Sandlot, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, and the first two Home Alone movies. Now wait, just one second guys, before anyone goes down to the comment section just to say that Netflix does the exact same thing, just stop. The difference here is that Netflix, unlike Disney, doesn't own the content that they're cycling in and out of their roster. The content that they do produce themselves doesn't leave their platform in any real meaningful way. And quite frankly, that's just by design. They want it to be that way so people can discover it at their leisure. Even when they cancel a TV show or a movie bombs, Netflix still wants you to go and watch it at least at some point. The reason that Netflix has to constantly cycle through content is solely due to licensing deals that are largely negotiated behind closed doors, unless the property is just simply too big to ignore. But when it comes to Disney and their own streaming service, Disney+, Plus, they don't really seem to have that issue. And even though right now a lot of people are speculating that while Disney might own the rights to these movies, they probably don't have the license to stream them exclusively on their service, at least not domestically and at least not yet. Because even though it has been reported that those films have left the domestic market streaming service, they are still available in international markets. However, this news leads the cynic in me to think that there's a far more nefarious and historically relevant explanation that Disney is placing its streaming service content into the Disney Vault. For anyone who doesn't know, the Disney Vault is a term named for the practice of releasing Walt Disney Animation Studios feature films on home video for a very limited time before stopping production and creating an artificial scarcity in the marketplace. In practice, at least through the 90s and early 2000s, this led to a greater demand for the future home releases for the exact same titles when the mainstream home entertainment platforms began to change. Think VHS to DVD, DVD to Blu-ray, and Blu-ray to 4K. It's kind of a cool concept and definitely makes sense from a business standpoint, but in reality, it's a greedy practice that only serves to justify the continued premiums on ownership for decades-old Disney films, as opposed to the price differences between other movie studios' films that were released in the same years. Anyway, the point of this video and the reason that I'm kind of mad about it is that in 2019, Disney CEO Bob Iger revealed that due to Disney trying to sell Disney Plus as the go-to streaming network for the next decade, the company kind of promised that in order to compete with streaming networks, they would be retiring the Vault system completely and putting every single one of their TV shows, films, TV movies, direct-to-video classics, and the like all on Disney Plus for everyone's viewing pleasure. And if you've been following this for any real stretch of time, you know that that just doesn't really sound right. Because in March of 2019, after Disney purchased 20th Century Fox, the House of Mouse withdrew an entire library worth of films available in circulation from various movie chains. This was a continuation of the vault-like concept, making every single viewing of anything owned by Disney very much a premium experience and unable to be seen on various platforms that the viewers really wanted to. And now, not even two months into the lifespan of their new streaming service, we've already seen a silent purging of name brand content without much of an explanation. 
And coincidentally, the movies that have been reported missing are themselves part of franchises that are a bit in flux over at Disney. And everything that we know from Disney's past, it would make sense that Disney is once again trying to use its old tricks in order to keep demand up for its extensive library. With the widespread proliferation of on-demand streaming services offering up your favorite movies and TV shows at the touch of a button, it's really no wonder that syndication revenue, once a financial bedrock for entertainment media, has seen its shares begin to dip over the last seven years. Frankly, if the content is always there and you know it's going to stay there, you probably aren't going to go out of your way to watch it. As such, it would totally make sense in a world for Disney to cycle out its titles in intervals in order to keep demand high for future consumption. And Disney having exclusive rights to put out somewhere into the market, either in streaming or on home video or digital download, renting or whatever, of thousands and thousands of brands of intellectual property and the ability of holding that content in anything related to it, movies, television shows, little short films, whatever they've created, and strategically releasing it on Disney Disney Plus to drum up demand for a future project that they're making within that same brand would truly give Disney a wide length of additional power in a market that they're already dominating in. Even though I don't want to, this is kind of why I hate Disney Plus and why I feel like Disney just ruins everything. I mean, don't get me wrong, it isn't like they're the only streaming service that's doing this, but they're the only ones being so blatant about it. Sure, I'd love to own every single season of BoJack Horseman instead of the two that were currently available. And Cobra Kai definitely deserves a much more heartfelt release. But honestly, I can't think of another streaming service that is currently pushing out high quality, unskippable content for two of the most ridiculously popular brands in the entire world. And you don't even get the benefit of knowing that the content that you're currently paying monthly to view might just leave the service altogether for an unspecified reason for an undetermined amount of time. Now, I'm not going to lie. One of the only reasons that this is on my radar is because I'm one of the few people who still really appreciates owning their content on physical media. I'm sure there are plenty of people who think that this isn't really that big of a deal, as they'll either pay for the service regardless or find less savory means for viewing their favorite shows. But if you're like me and you've already gone out of your way to collect home releases for your favorite brands, this strategy somewhat degrades the value of your collection. It definitely robs the ability of everyone to adequately choose the method that they prefer to watch the content that they want to watch. But as I kind of alluded to earlier, Disney's not stupid. They know that the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as well as Star Wars and pretty much everything else they own, is more geared towards children than it is adults like myself. And the concept of building your own streaming network with high quality, unskippable, and quite frankly, premium brand content locked away on that platform with the only means of access being a monthly subscription fee is quickly approaching a reality in which the kids growing up watching that content right now are only ever going to know a way of consuming media in that form. That concept itself is more than a little bit disturbing to me, but that's just my take. <laughs> you know what, that's actually kind of cool. I've been wanting to do a video just like that for a really long time. I feel like Disney's getting away with so much these days, it's kind of crazy. But how are you able to get all of that together, especially in my voice? I am an unending database of all of your takes, both good and bad. And I am going to unleash them upon the entire world. Oh. Fuck. The KRW Network. <laughs>